Hello, uh, this is uh, Ashwin and uh, I will present the talk on uh, how to build optimally secure PRFs using block ciphers. This is a joint work with Benoit Kogliati and uh, Mridul Nandi. So in this work, we propose a new paradigm to build block cipher based PRFs with optimal security. So in the talk, I will uh, talk about PRFs. Uh, basically, I will give you a quick revisit with uh, to the definition and uh, security notion of PRF. Uh, I will give some examples of block cipher based PRFs. Uh, an existing method to achieve optimal n bit security. Uh, uh, so n is the block size of the block cipher. Uh, then I'll give you a new paradigm of uh, hashed and modified Benes, uh, uh, instantiated with pmac plus like uh, hash function. Uh, so the instantiation is called mpmac plus, and similarly I will instantiate it with the lightmac plus like hash uh, and call it uh, mlightmac plus. And uh, finally, the in the paper we also give some uh, refinements. So uh, I won't talk about the refinements in the in the talk, but uh, I will just mention them here. Okay, pseudo random functions are uh, simply a collection of functions uh, from 0, 1 uh, to star to 0, 1 to the n, uh, indexed by key, uh, key k uh, from 0, 1 to the k. And uh, the security goal of a pseudo random function is simply that uh, the function should behave as an independent uniform random function for independently sampled secret key k. And uh, our, uh, one of the most important applications of uh, PRFs are uh, message authentication codes, which are uh, symmetric key primitives that achieve integrity and authenticity and uh, it's well known that uh, any good PRF is a good MAC at least a good deterministic MAC so basically any PRF you can apply it as a message authentication code uh, so how do we define the security so we define the security using this uh, indistinguishability game so in this game you have two different worlds the real world and the ideal world and there is an adversary A that interacts with the uh, keyed function fk in the real world and uh, with the uniform with a uniform random function in the ideal world uh, so it can make q many queries and get q many outputs and after that it returns single bit as its output and we define the advantage of the adversary as uh, the probability that it returns one uh, when it is in the real world minus the probability that it returns one in the in the ideal world some uh, examples of uh, PRF based block ciphers include PMAC, uh, which is one of the most popular uh, uh, MAC constructions. Uh, uh, this construction is by Black and Rogaway. Uh, so PMAC plus uh, is a uh, parallel uh, parallelizable MAC uh, where the message is first ma message blocks are first uh, masked with uh, a masking value, uh, which which is generated by uh, uh, this uh, gamma code multiplied by uh, the encryption of zero uh, for each position so the position one is uh, multiplied by the gamma code for one position two is multiplied by the gamma code for two and so on and then this mask value is encrypted and uh, finally we accumulate all these values into a hash value which is encrypted again to get the final output uh, it has been shown that pmac is secure as long as uh, uh, this term q square l max is much less than 2 to the n where q is the number of queries and l max is uh, the uh, size of the maximum permissible uh, message length so it's the maximum number of blocks that you can query and uh, the, uh, and there is an implicit uh, assumption in all these uh, uh, construction that l max is much less than 2 to the n by 2 and uh, you can see that this construction is at most birthday security in fact uh, there is not even birthday security in terms of the number of queries but uh, we can consider it, it as birthday secure uh, when you consider all uh, the or total number of all the uh, query blocks. Uh, then there is LightMac uh, by Luke Satal, uh, which is a refinement of PMAC uh, in terms of a cleaner security bound. So in LightMac, instead of uh, masking, what we do is we uh, uh, we encode the message block along with counter values which are dependent upon the position so for the first position we encode it with the counter value 1 second position we encode it with counter value 2 and so on and then we do the same uh, uh, processing as done in uh, pmac so we encrypt the uh, values and then we uh, sum them together to get a hash value which is again encrypted to get the output and lightmac has been shown to be uh, secured as long as uh, uh, Q is at most 2 to the n by 2. 
uh, a popular example for beyond birthday security is uh, pmac plus uh, which is uh, again an extension of pmac uh, so how it is extended is uh, that we add another uh, hash layer here which is a linear combination uh, uh, based on uh, multiplication by two uh, so the first uh, output is multiplied by two to the l and the last output is multiplied by two to the zero uh, rather the first output is multiplied by two to the l minus one and the last output is multiplied by two to the zero and uh, and they are summed together and the, these final two sums are encrypted and the outputs are summed to get the uh, final output of the pmac plus and pmac plus is uh, shown to be secure as long as uh, basically the number of queries is at most uh, 2 to the 3 and by 4 uh, assuming that the length is uh, some constant value uh, uh, similarly lightmac has been extended to lightmac plus by naito uh, so this construction is again similar to uh, pmac plus uh, uh, you do the same kind of linear combination based uh, uh, accumulation in the lower layer and then we uh, uh, encrypt it and sum to get the final output and uh, lightmac uh, as in case of uh, uh, lightmac plus as in case of lightmac has a very uh, clean security bound so we have uh, the condition that uh, the uh, the construction is secure as long as uh, q is at most 2 to the 3 n by 4 uh, most of the uh, PRF based, uh, uh, most of the PRF constructions are actually based on uh, this classical uh, paradigm called the hash then PRF paradigm. So this is a very classical way of building a variable input length PRF uh, where we have two components, uh, hash function h, uh, which uh, is required to be universal. So the by universal mean that the, the output should not uh, should collide with very low probability, given that the inputs are distinct. And uh, and the assumption that the, 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 this key k is chosen uniformly at random, and there is a finalization function which is a, which is a fixed input length PRF, so f is uh, this PRF. And uh, what has been shown is that uh, this construction is secured uh, up to hash collision. So uh, the security is bounded by the uh, universal property of the hash function h. That is, uh, for optimal security, uh, you must have two n bit of hash output. Uh, that is this part uh, should have should be 2n bits uh, long because uh, I mean using the birthday bond or birthday game argument what you can uh, uh, what you have is that if you have 2n bits of uh, hash output then the number of queries is bounded by 2 to the n so you can go till 2 to the n uh, if you have at least 2n bit of hash output and uh, because the hash output is now increased we need a, a f function which is uh, uh, kind of domain extending uh, so we need uh, length doubling PRF uh, at the input end so we need a 2n bit 2n bit PRF in finalization so let's see some examples of uh, uh, fixed input length uh, contracting PRF so the first example that I will give is uh, a truncation of 5 round Feistel so a 5 round Feistel is actually a secure PRP as long as Q is much less than 2 to the n uh, and what you can do is you can actually truncate uh, the last call and uh, if we release this t value then uh, we can again show that this truncation of 5 round Feistel is uh, secure as a PRF as long as q is uh, much less than 2 to the n. So uh, basically uh, we want a block cipher based construction so uh, we have to replace these FKI uh, functions with some block cipher based construction. If you directly replace it with the block cipher, then actually this security result uh, does not hold as of now. So there is no result uh, on uh, five round Feistel uh, with the with the block cipher that proves it to be optimally secure or uh, n bit secure. So uh, what we can do uh, at the best is we can replace it with uh, XOR of permutations. Uh, so that uh, the resulting con uh, resulting uh, construction will again be a PRF, uh, but in that case we have to apply four pairs of independent permutations, and that will result in eight calls to the block cipher. Uh, instead of that, what would we can uh, use another transformation, uh, another set of transformations called uh, the butterfly transformation. But the problem with butterfly transformation is uh, that it's uh, secure in uh, KPSRT. So the inputs L and R are assumed to be 
chosen uniformly at random so they are not in the uh, hand of uh, adversary okay just a uh, point uh, about the notation here so if uh, from l to uh, x there is a uh, arrow and there is a edge and uh, if f1 is a label then that means that this is f1 of l is mapping to this uh, uh, this xor so basically x is f1 of l plus r and y is f3 of l plus r uh, sorry uh, x is f1 of l plus f2 of r and y is f3 of l plus uh, f4 of r okay uh, so uh, based on this uh, butterfly transformation uh, we get this Bennett transformation which is uh, uh, just uh, two layers of uh, a butterfly transformation and this construction has been sh shown to be secure as long as uh, q is much less than 2 to the n and uh, here we have no assumptions on l and r so basically l and r uh, the adversary has complete control over l and r uh, again f uh, these f5 uh, functions are uh, prs so we can replace them by xor of pair of independent permutations which will result in 16 blocks of calls but because we need just uh, um, the s output so we can drop uh, four calls uh, pertaining to f7 and f8 but still we'll need uh, at least 12 calls here uh, another uh, modification of the Bennett construction is uh, the modified Bennett where we drop uh, f2 and f3 in the upper layer so instead of uh, f2 and f3 we have identity functions here but this construction is uh, only secure as long as q is much less than 2 to the uh, n into 1 minus epsilon for any epsilon which is greater than 0 so the adversary uh, so we have the control over epsilon we can choose some small epsilon but still it won't be uh, optimally secure so we still have will still have something uh, uh, less than 2 to the n uh, when we replace it with the uh, uh, block ciphers so here i've ign ignored the uh, uh, other part of the output because we are more interested in uh, 2 and 2 n bit uh, uh, functions so basically uh, uh, if we replace uh, the functions with the blo with the block ciphers then uh, the security has been shown to be up to 2 to the 3 n by 4 when uh, this uh, all these uh, block ciphers are uh, keyed independently but there is no result on uh, uh, the n bit security or uh, close to n-bit security for this block cipher based construction and uh, in fact there is a non-trivial bottleneck in uh, the proof of optimal security uh, which is uh, which has been shown uh, in uh, which has been discussed in several papers in fact in our paper we have discussed this uh, so I, I won't go into the details here but uh, you can look into the paper to uh, get an idea about the bottleneck Okay, uh, now I'll present the uh, our main contribution of this paper, which is the hash then modified Bennett uh, paradigm. So what we do is we uh, we uh, apply a pre-processing layer here uh, on the hash functions uh, on the on the message to get uh, a fixed input uh, L and R of the uh, modified Bennett. So this lower layer is the modified Bennett, and in the upper layer we apply a pre-processing and uh, so we add a hash preprocessing layer before mbenes to uh, get this hash then mbenes uh, and this minus f annotation is because we only use uh, functions here so we only use random functions here so this is the uh, random function flavor of the htmb uh, similarly what we can uh, we have uh, a permutation based construction uh, where we uh, replace the upper layer uh, functions with directly with permutations so pi 1 and pi 2 replace gamma 1 and gamma 2 and in the lower layer we use uh, sum of permutations to replace uh, these uh, random functions gamma 3 and gamma 4 uh, another set of uh, 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 refinement uh, gives us htmbp2 which simply replaces pi 3 plus pi 4 by pi 3 and pi 5 plus pi 6 by pi 4 so this is kind of uh, uh, a mirror image of uh, HDMBF where gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4 are replaced with pi 1, pi 2, pi 3 and pi 4. And uh, as we will show these uh, constructions avoid the previous bottleneck uh, as was present in the case of MBenes 
and they actually uh, achieve security close to to the end uh, with some restrictions on the query okay uh, just a, a note on the uh, security notion required from the hash function so we need a uh, 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 basically we define a new notion of uh, 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 universality for hash functions that we called a die block ACU cube so basically a hash function H uh, is a die block ACU cube if for every Q tuple of queries XQ uh, the probability that uh, the two outputs collide two hash output collides is bounded by epsilon 2 and uh, for any uh, single lane for any lane H1 or H2 uh, the number of colliding pairs is uh, uh, the probability that the number of colliding pairs is more than Q this is bounded by epsilon 1 so uh, we, we we bound both the universal property of the hash function basically the joint universal property over the Q tuple as well as the number of colliding pairs for the uh, uh, individual lanes a simple example for this hash function is uh, a combination of two independently uh, keyed hash functions h1 and h2 and we, what you can show is that h1 and h2 is epsilon almost universal hash function then h is uh, q sigma q epsilon q square epsilon square dbacu q uh, this result is actually quite simple to observe and uh, this comes directly from uh, markov's inequality okay uh, let's have a uh, quick look into the proof uh, approach so the core idea is to uh, avoid any circular relation between the x size and y size after the modified butterfly so uh, basically what we mean by modified uh, modified butterfly uh, by this circular relation uh, is that uh, there is a, a system of equation in s right so uh, and uh, what what we want is uh, that uh, the rank of this equation the system of equation should be either it should be full or if it is low then uh, uh, the probability of uh, getting certain kind of uh, uh, certain kind of uh, trivial equalities uh, that should be uh, small so uh, let's see uh, how this circulation is defined so basically uh, the, the system equation for s is uh, defined like this so uh, uh, each si value is uh, defined as pi 3 of xi plus pi 4 of yi and where xi and yi are defined like this and uh, as i said we we want either the rank should be q because if the rank is q then uh, we know that uh, s has a unique solution and this solution will hold with very low probability because each equation will hold with uh, some non-trivial which will give some non-trivial uh, uh, condition on the uh, these gamma functions and when rank is less than q we know that there exists a minimal set of uh, indices i1 to ik such that sum of xij is equal to 0 and sum of yij is equal to 0 and what this actually shows is that uh, all these xij values and yij values they appear e uh, an even number of times so let's see uh, how this uh, circular relation is defined for this rank less than q so basically what we do is we reorder the uh, the k queries uh, pertaining to this uh, minimal set of indices i1 to ik uh, such that xi1 equals xi2 yi2 equals yi3 xi3 equals xi4 and so on xi ki minus 1 equals xi k so there is a uh, alternate uh, shift between uh, the equalities and finally uh, uh, and finally what we have is uh, that uh, the last output and the yik value it collides with yi1 because uh, the sum of all y values are is zero so uh, using this uh, so basically what we want is we want to bound this the probability of such uh, events or in other words we want to bound the probability of getting uh, such cycles so there are three possible cases so first case is that all k equations are independent which is actually quite easy because uh, uh, we have k many indices here and we have k independent equations so the probability is bounded by q to the k by 2 to the kn uh, the second case is that all k equations are independent except for the last one uh, in this case uh, uh, because 
the last one is dependent on the previous equation so we must have h2 mik equals h2 mij and h2 mi1 equals h2 mij prime for some j and j prime now using the dbac uq property the this probability can be bounded by q to the k minus 2 by 2 to the k minus 1 into n the the denominator should be easy to uh, easy to verify because uh, uh, among the k equations you know that only one equation is dependent so if you remove that then you have k minus k minus 1 independent equations which will give you the denominator about the numerator so basically the dbs uq property shows you that uh, there can be at most q many choices for ik ij pair and q many choices for i1 ij prime pair uh, in other words uh, these four indices can be chosen in q square ways and apart from these four equations the k minus 4 indices can be chosen in q to the k minus 4 ways so uh, in total they will be chosen in uh, they can be chosen in at most q to the k minus 2 ways this gives you the uh, this probability the third case uh, is uh, actually a uh, generalization of the second case where this uh, uh, where this uh, independent uh, where this last in dependent equation it can occurs uh, earlier than the last equation of the cycle so there exists a subtrail of length k prime less than k where the equations are independent except for the last one uh, so again in this case uh, the analysis is sim similar to the second case and the probability is bounded by q to the k prime minus 1 by 2 to the k prime minus 1 into n and when you combine all these things you get uh, a bound of the order of q square by 2 to the 2n uh, with appropriate bound for epsilon 2 and epsilon 1 and uh, the informal theorem is something like this so the advantage is bounded by q square by 2 to the 2n uh, assuming epsilon 2 and epsilon 1 are of the same order and uh, it can be easily verified this is this is less than 1 for uh, q less than 2 to the n okay uh, a very uh, quick look at the proof of hdmb p1 so uh, basically we have made two changes so we have replaced the gamma 1 gamma 2 value uh, functions with the pi 1 and pi 2 permutations and in the lower layer we use sum of permutation so the sum of permutation uh, can be replaced with uh, independent uh, functions gamma 3 and gamma 4 using uh, uh, the bound on the prf security of sum of permutation by dai et al and uh, the upper layer uh, actually the uh, proof approach will be uh, exactly similar just there will be a slight change in the distribution and the probability distribution due to the change from random function to random permutation but otherwise the proof approach is exactly similar and what we get is uh, a bound like this so the um, uh, security order is still uh, similar so we get uh, security in the order of q to the 1.5 by 2 to the 1.5 into n Uh, about HDMB P2, the uh, the overall strategy of the proof is similar, uh, but now we need a lower bound of the number of uh, pairs of permutation pi3 and pi4 that will satisfy the system of equation. So the first step uh, is again to bound the probability of some getting some bad xi and yi values using the randomness of the hashing key. So this is exactly similar to the previous case. And then the second step is uh, to handle the remaining cases. So what are the remaining cases? The remaining cases pertain to the uh, mirror theory result. So the mirror theory result uh, fixes three conditions. First one is that there is no alternating cycles. So basically, uh, uh, if you remember, uh, we discussed and uh, we discussed a circulation that xi1 equals xi2, yi2 equals yi3, and so on. Uh, so th there was a cycle uh, earlier. So that kind of cycle is not allowed. So basically we can use reuse the same analysis as before no alternating trail such that the corresponding si is xor to 0 again similar analysis will give us uh, this uh, uh, will uh, uh, disallow this kind of this uh, will uh, satisfy this condition as well and the number of block of equations involving more than xi plus 1 variables uh, uh, this, this should be bounded as well and uh, what you can show that uh, this is again uh, uh, this can again be bounded using the same uh, uh, analysis as used for the alternating cycles case so ultimately if you don't have these three conditions then uh, uh, mirror theory says that you have very good number of solutions and uh, when we plug in these solutions uh, we get the result for hdmb p2 as well 
uh, in in terms of instantiations, we instantiate the hashed and uh, modified banners with the mpmac plus like uh, uh, hash function. So if you remember the mpmac plus construction, uh, this is the hash function for mpmac plus, except for uh, one small change. So here we drop one block cipher call, and this block cipher call can be dropped because uh, the because the hash requirement is. Uh, Because the hash requirement is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, relaxed in case of uh, HTMB, so we just need a universal property on the full hash and uh, uh, bound on the number of colliding pairs on uh, individual layers. But in case of uh, uh, PMAC plus, uh, there is a, another requirement, uh, something called cover free, uh, uh, which requires this extra block cipher call here. So we can actually save one block cipher call here. So uh, basically, uh, if you apply HTMBP2, then you have four blocks, uh, four calls in the finalization. But we save one call here. So we uh, effectively we need only three calls. So in comparison to MPMAC plus, we need only one extra call. In uh, uh, in comparison to PMAC plus, we need only one extra call in MPMAC plus. So the result that we prove for this uh, hash function is that this is a good uh, DBACUQ hash function. Uh, uh, given that you take the bound, uh, you consider the security bound in terms of sigma, where sigma is the total number of all uh, query uh, blocks uh, across all queries. Similarly, we define uh, uh, lightmac plus based instantiation uh, where the hash function is called light hash. Again, we can drop the block cipher call and uh, what we have shown is that this construction is again a good DBSE UQ. So in terms of the summary, uh, our contributions are uh, like this. So we uh, present a novel method of constructing VIL PRFs uh, with three different instances based on uh, both functions and permutations. Uh, all three instances achieve optimal security well up to a certain uh, restriction on uh, the number of queries in some cases. And uh, we instantiate them with the light Mac plus and P Mac plus based hash functions. Uh, and we derive relevant bound for light hash and P hash. Uh, that when you combine them with the bounds for HTMB, uh, they actually imply almost to the end block security. Additionally, in the paper, what we have shown is uh, we have shown some variants of HTMB with reduced number of keys. So, for example, for HTMBF, we, we have reduced the number of keys from 4 to 1. For HTMB P1, we have reduced the number of keys from 6 to 3 keys. And for uh, HTMB P2, we have reduced from 4 keys to 2 key. Finally, uh, I'll uh, discuss uh, two open problems. So the first one is, uh, uh, is, can we further reduce the number of keys in case of HTMB P1 and HTMB P2? Uh, uh, basically, uh, the problem here is uh, the type of results that we have for sum of permutation and uh, action, the mirror theory. All these results, they don't uh, consider, uh, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, when you go for the optimal security, they don't consider the case where uh, the permutation is already sampled on some points. So when we when you consider the uh, single key case, they, there will be a uh, point where, you, where we have to consider results on mirror theory where uh, the permutation is already sampled on some point so there is already some input output restrictions and based on these additional constraints we have to get the similar uh, mirror theory result so uh, we don't yet know uh, how this can be done but uh, i mean this can be a, a interesting uh, future work uh, another direction can be uh, to reduce the number of permutation calls so uh, with this work we have shown that uh, with with one extra call we can uh, actually get n bit security as compared to pmac plus so for pmac plus we have l plus too many calls where l is the number of blocks in the message and for mpmac plus we have made just one extra call so mpmac plus requires just l plus 3 calls and it it achieves n bit security as compared to 3n by 4 bit security for pmac plus so uh, uh, this could be interesting to see whether you can actually reduce the number of calls to L plus 2 or whether this is uh, actually uh, the lower bound. Uh, so this can be another interesting problem to 
explore with this uh, i will end the talk thank you for your attention thank you very much